My harvests are becoming a lot less abundant. I haven't even harvested anything, I think, in a week. And this is all I got. Honestly, the second half of the gardening season has been a little bit disappointing because we got slammed with heat and that really took back some of my green beans. That also just really brought on the blight with the tomatoes. Um, so I'm really not getting like the second wave of tomatoes that I really hoped for. And I'm not getting like the green beans I really expected. I planted three beds of green beans and I've only harvested about a handful, unfortunately. But we finally broke the heat from last week. Um, we had two chunks that were extremely hot. And I think that's going to play a big role in how just how the garden really finishes out. I think we might go strong with some of the fall stuff we have planted, but we're currently sitting under 50 days now before our first um, expected frost. So what I'm going to do this morning is I'm actually gonna go ahead and just pull the rest of the tomatoes in my in-ground space. They're not going to do anything at this point. And I'm thinking I might go run to the garden center because I looked at my seeds this morning and I do have some beet seeds, but I don't have enough. Um, and I was actually considering potentially planting another wave of something over there as well whether that be just like baby greens or maybe another round of spinach or something just again to help supplement the chickens feed throughout winter and give them a source of greens and whatnot um, because yeah the tomatoes aren't doing anything and I'm sick of looking at it and I feel like if I leave that space blank for the next like what five or six weeks I'll be a little disappointed because we also could just like have a few extra weeks without frost because that's also happened. So that's what the game plan is this morning. The garden just feels like a mess. <laughs> if you're newer to gardening, this time of year can start to feel pretty discouraging because you see all of your hard work for the year start to die back. So for example, these tomatoes I've had since March and it's what september so that's a good chunk of the year that i've been working on these tomatoes this was actually the plum regal which is supposed to be either early or late blight resistant and it was no ounce of blight resistant i was going to keep my tomato cages in this area but the thing is i really don't think i'm going to plant tomatoes over here next year so i might as well go ahead and get them out now and make my life easier I honestly did not get that big of a harvest off of these plum regals either. So I wasn't like the biggest fan of them. I had better luck with my Supremo variety. I think I might actually process tomatoes next week or the week after, because obviously it's not like I'm getting that much more for this season. I am really disappointed though about my green beans because the same thing happened last year with my green beans. And I'm almost thinking that planting stuff in the middle of the season because um, that's kind of around mid June, I planted out these green beans. And by the time they really start to producing, the last two years, that's when we hit these big heat waves and then they just don't produce anymore. So. I'm gonna have to play around with the timing of that. In past years before I started to do a lot more like secession sowing, I would plant out my green beans in the spring and have really good harvest by like midsummer before it got really hot. So I don't know, I'm running into that problem where I don't have enough space for everything I wanna plant out. So I'm gonna have to prioritize even further next year, everything I wanna grow and maybe dumb down my list a little bit. I'm really gonna start going into garden planning mode over probably the next two months as the season slows down while this season is still really fresh in my head because I also like to get seeds ordered. I start my onion seeds end of December, early January. So I have to have a pretty good game plan going into the fall, especially because I plant out so much garlic. I have to know what I might have room for um, in the spring to get started. I put one of the last sunflowers in the chicken area last night and the girls are still going crazy on it. There's a few tomato cages I have in this pile that are about six years old and they're really starting to fall apart. But um, I am thinking I might keep all of these rings and maybe try to create something out of them. Thought it might be cool to use them as a structure to 
crochet some baskets or maybe some plant hangers of some sort. So I don't want to completely get rid of them, but they probably won't be tomato cages anymore. As much as I don't want to do this, this pumpkin I think was just a little too late and it has not done any type of fruit yet and I highly doubt I'm going to get anything from it. I can use this compost. So I'm going to go ahead and just rip out the pumpkin plant. Goodbye pumpkin. Hello compost. All right, I just got back from the garden center and I was able to grab a few things. So I got some more beets. I also grabbed some Swiss chard. So I've never grown Swiss chard before, but I actually had a discussion with a family member this weekend who was like, yeah, I grow Swiss chard. And I was like, all right, how do you use it? And kind of explained how she used it. And I was like, all right, well, I'll give it a shot. And they had Swiss chard seeds. So yeah, if you, um, have any good advice for Swiss chard, please let me know because this is a new one for me. I didn't think I'd have any more new varieties for this year. Um, I also grabbed this kale, which I've never grown the dwarf blue curled before, but it's a really fast variety, 21 to 55 days, um, kind of curly uh, kale but I don't have a variety like this. I also grabbed a bunch more spinach because my spinach in that far area was the only thing to not come up, which this is the, this will be the third time I've tried to direct seed spinach and I've never had a problem direct seeding spinach before. So I grabbed the big packet of that. Then I also grabbed some cilantro, but I will actually be starting this inside. I want to grow some cilantro under lights during winter um, and maybe like freeze dry it or just have it fresh under lights. Um, I've never had pretty good luck with cilantro. I've only been able to grow cilantro once. It was during fall in the garden. So maybe I'll have a little plant. I think today's going to be a pretty big um, day in the garden. I wasn't thinking initially it was going to be, but I'm going to get the rest of this stuff planted. I also am just going to find little pockets of little things that if I have seeds, I might attempt to plant more out than just this little area. I'm considering taking out my zinnias in this one area because they look pretty rough. Um, in this one area, they're the ones where all my pots are and these pots dry out a lot faster than a lot of my garden beds. So they don't really do well when we get those heat spells like that. But I have some more lettuce, some other beets. I have some bok choy, some more kohlrabi, and some mustard greens. Oh, there's the kale. I have um, red Russian kale. I thought it was out, but it was hiding from me. Uh, but yeah, I have a bunch of these little seeds here. This is kind of the last stretch of anything that will be planted will be today. And I kind of just want to get the garden space a little bit more cleaned up. It's a really nice day. It's currently like 75. It is supposed to get a little bit warmer, but I also have my elderberry plants that I want to get planted. Um, I think I'm going to put them in that eight by four garden bed over on this side area because they can get pretty big. Um, and having them in a raised bed like that over in that corner, when we do go to move, that might be a little bit easier to um, be able to dig them out and whatnot. So I'm gonna plant those over there. They really need to get planted. They did not do too well with the heat either being in pots, but um, yeah, I think it's going to be a pretty busy day out here because I just wanna get this place in order. I think this will probably be like the last like really big gardening day until we have some garden cleanup. And this will be the last stuff planted in this space um, until I plant garlic, which will be in like six to eight weeks. You know, this looks extra holy. <laughs> there was a bunch of different caterpillars on all of the broccoli that I found, but um, yep, I definitely 
definitely missed all of them. You know what, I'm just gonna take this whole leaf. Another one. It's looking like I probably just complete. oh my gosh. Yeah, it's looking like I completely just missed this plant. I also snagged more wood chips for my walkways while I was out. I'm just gonna put some worm castings down. No. Okay, I'm giving the Swiss chart the fighting chance. It's gonna go in one of my sunnier spots. So this does say uh, so as late as two months before your first frost. We are technically six weeks but we have had late frost so it's just one of those things where it's a gamble and i will gladly take a three dollar and fifty cents gamble we will still get baby greens out of this regardless but very curious about swiss chard if i like it or have some desire to grow it in the spring i will be better about timing all right let's see here this is a five color silver beet it's a rainbow variety give my garden a little pop of color. Like I said before, I'm also putting plastic over this, so this will give me a little bit of extension into the season too. But yeah, this is the very tail end of really being able to get anything planted in this space. These go about half inch in, so I'm just gonna press them into the soil, and then I am going to mulch with some straw. Okay, next up I have this mini pok choy, green jewel mini pok choy. I've only ever grown bok choy before, but this morning when I was going through seeds, I realized I had uh, these uh, sent to me and I haven't um, planted any of them. So they are days of harvest, approximately 45 days, give or take, because I mean, obviously we are in our extended season, so it's going to take a little bit longer, but they only get to be about four to five inches high and you can plant them every two inches. So this is a great little crop to throw under um, some plants plastic over winter. Um, I've always grown bok choy for stir fries and with this being like a miniature version of um, bok choy, I'm pretty sure I have my bok choy seeds here, you can kind of get an idea of what they look like side by side. A bok choy is definitely a little bit bigger, but these stalks are just really great to throw into a stir fry. I really like that. So um, I'm going to give these mini bok choys a little go because you can, seems like I can get a lot of bang for my buck. So I might as well plant them. Hmm, there's a monarch. Next, I'm going to plant beets. Um, I haven't found a way that I love beets yet, but I really wanna freeze dry a bunch and make a powder because I really wanna make some type of greens powder and add that to that. Or maybe I can disguise it in sauces and stuff or throw it into like a smoothie or something. Uh, but I really wanna make a beet powder out of all these beets. Or um, if you have a favorite recipe for beets that you feel like I should try, let me know because I have not really played around with them too much, but I really want to start incorporating them a little bit. So I'm just going to plant these every four inches. It says spacing of 12. So I'm just going to do a pretty good row of them and probably call it a day. I might stick them some other places too. We'll see. Okay, so last thing going into the in-ground space is this dwarf blue kale. So I actually was just reading the description of the back. I didn't even read it on the back. I just saw that it was a pretty quick um, variety when I saw it in the garden center. So it says dwarf blue curled uh, from the 1800s is extremely hardy and will overwinter in all but the coldest climates. It grows best in cool weather, but it will also, also withstand some heat. So. That's great, that's good to know.
So I'm taking a break from the garden at the moment. It started to get a little bit warm and I am just getting um, some tomatoes that I need to get into the freezer all handled. And then I'm also going to get some cayennes and paprikas into the freeze dryer to make some more powders out of them. Um, all I'm doing here is coring each of the tomatoes and then laying them flat into a freezer bag. And I'm just gonna throw them into my freezer um, and do a big bulge sauce day. I'm not sure if I wanna do this sauce day coming up in a week or two. I'm thinking I'm probably going to have the time to do it then, but I'm almost wanting to wait until my other San Morzano plant is completely just like clonked out but I really don't know if I'm gonna get that much more off of that. But I mean, I could squeeze like an extra pint or quart over like the next month and kind of wait and just be patient. Maybe I'll do that. But yeah, I'm gonna get all of these cord laid into freezer bags, thrown downstairs. And when I go downstairs to go toss these into my deep freeze, I'm gonna turn on my freeze dryer and then I'm gonna start uh, getting all of the peppers process. So I am gonna do cayenne powder today. So I am going to de-seed the cayennes. Um, I've been showing you guys how I've either done dehydrated um, cayennes and I've made uh, red chili flakes. And when I do that, I don't take out um, the seeds from the cayennes. It's a really quick process. But when I've been doing powder over this summer, when I freeze dry the cayennes, I've been de-seeding them. Um, that way it's a lot easier to um, make into a powder really fast. So uh, it's a little bit more work and I will definitely be wearing gloves because they are spicy. Nothing too exciting under two freezer bags worth. Look at all those tomatoes. It's not all tomatoes. There's stuff underneath, but there is a lot of tomatoes. So all I'm doing with the paprikas is cutting off the tops and then I am taking out the seeds by slicing just one side and then I'm gonna lay it flush side up on the tray. So just cut off the top, cut a slit down the one side, open up the pepper. And at this point, just scrape out the seeds. I kind of like to hold the pepper while I scrape the seeds with my thumb. Even though a paprika pepper isn't spicy, I still like to wear gloves whenever I'm de-seeding peppers because I don't want to have all that into <laughs> my nails and whatnot. So here is all the peppers. I have cayennes here, paprikas right there. And then I forgot I had some red jalapenos and serranos and a few other jalapenos. So I just went ahead and put those on there as well. I'm gonna make some cookies as a little pick-me-up and this is probably one of my favorite hacks. So every time or typically most times I make cookies, I will make half the batch and then I will place half the batch into cookie balls. I will pre-freeze them and then I'll throw it into a freezer bag. That way I can grab out perfectly sized cookies from my freezer, throw them onto a cookie sheet and then all I do is I put the oven at the exact same temp I typically would have it for my cookies, but it does typically take a few more minutes of bake time. So I'm just gonna place six on there for now. This is great for when you just want like one cookie or if you're in a situation like me where it's just me and my husband and making a whole batch of cookies doesn't really make sense because they start to go bad. They don't taste as fresh. This takes like less than 15 minutes. I love it. I'm gonna toss these into the oven and we're gonna have some fresh cookies. I think I'm gonna make some coffee, have a cookie, and then I'll go outside and do some more gardening. Mm -hmm. Let's go see how many eggs we got. I 
haven't shown you guys the onion holder all hung up in the kitchen. I love it. It's literally one of my favorite things I think I've made. I wish you could smell my kitchen right now. Fresh coffee and fresh chocolate chip cookies. It is a delightful smell. Mm. All right, this is where I am going to plant my elderberry plants. Here, you girls want the rest of these broccolis? All right, so this is what we are working with. So I did end up having a lot of this die back with the heat. It got pretty dry in that little pot. So that's one reason why I really wanted to get these planted also just before fall so they can get a root established before the winter. So I'm putting them both here. Let's see here. Mm, not too shabby. Whew. Let's see, I wanted it to be turned like that. Okay, so this little line of pots here is the next thing on the agenda. I have zinnias over here and over here that are new. I have some other ones blooming still up front and all of these look terrible. The heat really knocked these ones out for their last wave of flowers. So I'm gonna go ahead and pull all of this and I think I'm gonna go ahead and plant some of that kale that I mentioned earlier over here. All right, so I'm gonna go through and do a good amount of deadheading on my zinnias. There are some more blooms starting to go. So I'm gonna try to clean these up a little bit. They look a little rough at the moment. And then these pots that are lining up the front, I'm going to plant these out with some more spinach because I don't think I could have any more spinach at the moment. I did go ahead and clip off the one. I've been waiting for this one to fully dry up and go to seed because that was a really, really pretty flower. So I wanted to save the seeds off that one. The butterflies have really been enjoying all this. I've been seeing so many um, monarchs around all the flowers. So I don't really want to get rid of them, even though they look a little rougher. The butterflies are still enjoying them. And I did notice earlier when I was out here, like talking at the very beginning, that was the very first hummingbird I've ever seen on my property. And I didn't notice it until I was looking back at the footage and the hummingbird stops right here on the flower and goes about its way. It was an actual hummingbird. It wasn't a hummingbird moth. It was an actual hummingbird. So that's really cool to see. I've never seen a hummingbird on my property before. So I'm really excited about that. I said earlier, I wasn't gonna plant cilantro outside, but this is actually the pot I wanted to plant it in. So I'm gonna actually plant out this one here and this one over here with cilantro. And then um, if it does well, I'll just transfer this one inside once it gets uh, really cool and put it under lights. Well say when we got all of that heat, I was doing a bunch of deep watering in the trellis and I was deep watering my squash. Then out of nowhere, I had three of my honey nut squashes um, crack. And then I read that if um, they get deep irrigation or deep water during that final growth stage, they can crack, unfortunately. So I've been just lightly watering uh, multiple times a day now instead of deep watering them because that's something I didn't know. I probably should have done a little bit more of a thorough job this morning than just look at the one plant. I've already gotten caterpillars off these plants twice, but it's not been to this extent. Here, ladies. So, if you're not new here, I'm sure you know it's squash bug time. Haven't found too many, but yesterday, 
I was in the trellis tunnel. I can't remember what I was doing, um, but I saw a cluster of eggs in the corner of my eye and I go over there and some of them were hatching. I ran inside to get my lovely, whatever this is called, and um, I couldn't find them again. So those are somewhere. <gasps> Aha! Doop, 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 doop. Just when I thought I wasn't gonna find anything, we found a cluster of eggs. Man, I cannot believe we're on our final few weeks of summer. Fall is going to be here before we know it. And I'm really happy I got as much done today in preparation for fall as I was able to. Planting was number one priority and that needed to get done. Um, there's still a few things I need to do, such as weeding and just getting a few more plants out that really are just probably taking up nutrients at this point. But I was able to get so much done and I felt so accomplished. I cannot believe really fall is about to be here. So. Fall garden is going to be one where it's always a toss up, but hopefully we'll get lucky and get some good things out of it. But either way, guys, I hope you enjoyed spending the day with me. I'll see you guys all in the next video. Bye.